In this problem, we are playing with a very important equation in fluid mechanics, the Navier-Stokes equation. And the game that we're playing is that we are given a fluid flow with uh, two components, steady flow, uh, two component velocity flow. Um, and we are looking for pressure. Um, and this is a pretext to um, articulate a little bit the mathematical mechanics of this physical law. Uh, there's no particular meaning in this free flow here that we have. Um, if a flow looked like this, we wouldn't even know. Uh, and certainly we would not uh, calculate pressure based on a velocity field like this. Uh, but it's just a good opportunity to, to play with, uh, with those. So do not focus on the, on the meaning of this um, field on the top left here. But instead, uh, try to focus on what the Navier-Stokes equation tells us and does not tell us about the nature of the fluid flow. So what do we have? Navier-Stokes equation is um, a mass, uh, sorry, a momentum balance equation. And so what it tells us is that mass times acceleration is the sum of forces. And mass times acceleration in a fluid flow, uh, we write it like this. We write it as rho times the total time derivative of velocity, like this. Uh, perhaps let me write on the left so we have more space. So like this, rho times the total time derivative of velocity. This is the acceleration field. Um, this is equal to the sum of three contributors. Uh, the contributors are gravity, rho g, like this. Um, the negative of the gradient of pressure, which is grad minus grad p, like this. Um, and then the contribution of shear. And shear is uh, the viscosity multiplied by the Laplacian of velocity, like this. So the second derivative with respect to space of velocity. This is a three-dimensional equation. In this case, we only have two dimensions uh, on the top. So we're going to split this in only two components. Yes. So let's write out those two components for u and v according to that equation. This is for u, things, whoop, something that looks like this. Density multiplied by the total time derivative of the x component of velocity. And so this is um, the partial derivative with respect to time of u plus u multiplied by the per partial derivative with respect to x of u plus v multiplied by the partial derivative with respect to y of u. And this is equal to the sum of three contributions. Uh, one is the component of gravity in the x direction. Uh, second is minus the partial derivative of p with respect to x. And the third is going to be the Laplacian of of the x component of velocity multiplied by viscosity. And the Laplacian is the sum of uh, the second derivative of u with respect to x plus the second derivative of u with respect to y, like this. Uh, there would be a third component here and also a third component there if we had three dimensions, but in this case there are only two. And this equation has an equivalent in the y direction, uh, which is like this. So let's write it out. Whoop. Um, it should look like this. We have partial v with respect to t plus u partial v over partial x uh, plus v partial v over partial y, like this. And this is equal to rho g y minus partial p over partial y plus u, sorry, mu, multiplied by the second derivative with respect to x of v plus the second derivative with respect to y of v. Oops. All right. So what does that tell us about pressure? Where pressure here is hidden inside two terms. Uh, one is here, and the other is there. And what we're going to try to do is to isolate those two terms um, as a function of all the rest, um, in which we're going to plug in u and v, which are on top here. And based on this, we are going to try to find out what p could be. Uh, so let's do that. Let's, uh, let's write out what this could be. I'm going to number those equations, and I'm going to call this first equation here 1, and the second equation here 2. 
and I'm also going to write on the side if I have a little bit of space uh, perhaps let's do it here I'm going to write on the side uh, the, the conditions that we have on the top so if I move this up a little bit hmm, not so much space left we have here we have uh, u is equal to a x plus b and v is equal to minus a y uh, plus c x okay let's take equation number one the top equation here and let's try to isolate um, p or right, let's try to fill it in with with the data that we have let me bring it down a little bit um, again so we can see the whole equation like so okay so let's take this first equation equation number one and let's apply the special condition of having u uh, which is there so um, equation one becomes this let's go let's go rho times the derivative of u with respect to time here is going to be zero u multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x is going to be ax plus b multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x is just going to be a like this uh, then we have v multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to y but if i derivate this with respect to y i get zero so this whole expression is going to be zero and this is equal to rho gx in our case in this particular problem we have no gravity so we just ignore g and we have just, just right away minus grad p um an x component of grad p so partial p partial x with p here being r unknown um, and then we have mu here with second derivative of u with respect to x i derivated once here with respect to x to get a and i derivate a with respect to x to get just zero so this is going to be zero and the second uh second time i'm going to derivate this with respect to y two times to also get zero like so so this simplifies a whole a whole lot um and if i bring it up like so we should get something like this i'm going to take this partial p partial x and move it to the other side so i have something positive um partial p over partial x like this is equal and i'm put it, putting this to the other side is equal to rho um times um a squared x plus a b like this um, and all the rest goes to zero let me check that i'm not um, tripping over my own feet yes this should be fine like this okay um so this is equation one and then we're going to take equation two um and do the same thing so we're now concerning ourselves with a y component here uh, and in this y component we also have the x component of velocity appearing um, a couple of times so let's let's take a good look uh equation let me perhaps uh, try to play a trick um, with this cool software and try to move this down yes so we have a bit more space to play with equation two like this yes this is kind of cool um, so let's take v here and apply equation two um, let's go we have rho times the change in time of this velocity here component this is zero uh, plus u multiplied by the derivative of this with respect to x so it's going to be a x plus b this is u and i multiply this by uh, the partial derivative of this with respect to x is going to be just c like so uh, plus v um, sorry v here with uh, multiplied by the derivative of this with respect to y so that's going to be v yes minus a y plus c x here and i multiply this by the derivative of u with respect to y which is going to be minus a like this okay 
uh, and this is equal to uh, gravity is zero in our case uh, minus the partial derivative of p with respect to y uh, plus mu multiplied by I'm going to derivate this v expression with respect to x two times. The first time I get just c, and the second time I get zero. And then when I derivate this with respect to y two times, the first time I get minus a, and the second time I also get zero. Very convenient. And so when we isolate now this partial p, partial y, uh, we get something like this. We get partial p, partial y is equal to uh, minus this whole term here. So I have minus rho multiplied by, um, let's write it out, let's write it out, let's see, we have ACX plus BC minus, um, that's going to be a plus A squared Y, uh, and then minus ACX, minus ACX. And in here, uh, it's a funny coincidence, almost like this exercise was engineered uh, to look like this. Uh, we have the ACX going away, so that we get partial P over partial Y is equal to minus rho times BC plus A squared Y. Okay, so let's take a look now at the, the results that we have. We have one equation which tells us how P changes with Y. Like so. And we have one equation that tells us how P changes with X. Our mission now is to take both of those hints as to how P could be and put them up to one complete model equation. And what we're gonna do is we're going to integrate. We're going to integrate both of those equations uh, in a very special way. Um, but there's a trap uh, when we do this, and the trap is to not check that those two equations, which I'm going to number here, this is going to be equation three, and this is going to be equation four. Uh, the trap is to not check that both of those equations are compatible with one another. And so the step that we need to do is to make sure that there exists um, a pressure field that matches both of those conditions. It could well be that the derivative of y, um, of uh, the derivative of p with respect to y, specify conditions that make it so that it's impossible that the derivative of p with respect to x um, uh, matches equation four. And the way to check that this is true, the way to check that the continuous function for p exists is to go like this. So I like to have a warning sign, a warning sign over here, like so. Um, and we check, we check. Um, check that the function p, um, p exists. The way to check is to take the derivative sorry, the derivative with respect to y of the derivative with respect to x of p. Yes. Um, and this must, must be equal uh, to the derivative with respect to x of the derivative with respect to y of p, like this. Um, and let's do this, it's very simple. I derivate this function here um, with respect to x. There's no x present in this equation, so this is going to be zero. And I derivate this with respect to y. There is no function of y in here, so it's all going to be zero. So I can just make a, a big satisfying check like this and write verified because both are equal to zero. This is a necessary, necessary step. Um, if we don't do that, um, we could uh, end up with a very uncomfortable um, result that based on which equation we begin the rest of the problem with, uh, we get different fields for pressure uh, that are completely incompatible one with the other. So again, now, now that we made sure that those two are compatible with one another, we're going to try to 
draw to, 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 to find out what the equation for P is. Now let's take equation 3 and let's try to integrate uh, this equation with respect to y to obtain um, a function for a function for p. Um, actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to take equation four because I can keep it on the screen. I think like this. No, no. Let's go for equation three. Okay. I have a few issues with space management on the screen. Uh, let's do it like this. So let me copy uh, equation. Let me copy equation three over here. Um, let me make some space. Equation three. Uh, equation three tells us that um, partial p over partial y is equal to minus rho times b c plus a squared y. I think. Let me let me just check. B c plus a squared y. Yes, like this. So th this is equation three, and based on this equation three, we're going to find out um, what p is. So what do we do? We integrate. So let's integrate p with respect to y uh, to get a function. So we get near um, minus rho multiplied by b c y plus a squared times one half of y squared. And you know what comes after that? It's a big plus. Uh, very important here. If we had an integration uh, where we had a complete derivative, we would just have here a starting point, an arbitrary constant behind this. But here is a partial derivative. This is not a complete derivative. It's only the der derivative with respect to y. And we know in the back of our mind that p is a function of x, y, and t. Um, so we need instead of this plus that I wrote here, I'm going to erase, uh, we need to have something that is a function of all the rest that we did not take into account. And this function here uh, will be a function, whoop, this is too thick, uh, will be a function of all the rest. So we're going to call this a function f, and this function f is a function of what we did not have in there, which is x and t. Like this. Some people uh, like to say that this is a pure function of x and t that does not have any constant and like to add over here a p0 starting point. Um, some people say that just having a function uh, like this is enough and it's, it already is this p0, this starting constant is integrated, it's included already in, inside this function. I'm of that opinion too, so I would not put a p0 over here. But keep in mind that inside this function, there may be just a starting point, a basic starting pressure uh, that is the same everywhere. Okay, this is highly unsatisfactory. We don't want to have a function of x left over over here because um, we know something about um, the relation between pressure and x. And we know that because of equation number four that we had over here. We know that the derivative of p with respect to x uh, is equal to that. Um, and so what are we going to do with this thing that we integrated here? We had an integration uh, What do we do uh, with this to find out what this function is? We're going to derivate it um, This is really funny. And so we're going to take the derivative of p with respect to x um, so that we can find out uh, what this missing bit here, this function of x is, because we know what the derivative of p with respect to x is, according to equation 4. Yes. So what we do here is now we, whoop, let me uh, change again to this turquoise color here, and we derivate, and then we equate it with equation uh, equation number four, which is over here, with equation four. And so let's derivate this um, again. So let's have partial p with partial x like this. And we derivate this with respect to x um, minus rho times the derivation of this with respect to x is going to be zero. And the derivation of this with respect to x is also going to be zero here. Uh, plus then here, uh, is going to be 
the function f prime um, of x and t. Yes, the derivative of f with respect to x. Um, and so, and um, this I now know is equal to equation four. And so I can come back up here and copy the content of equation four, rho times a squared x um, plus ab, which I believe is missing a minus because this was a minus over here and I should have carried out the minus over there. So this should be a minus in here. Um, this equation here uh, comes right there. And so I'm gonna copy it over. This is equal to minus rho times a squared x plus a b. We're almost there. We're almost there. We have not f, but f prime, the derivative of f with respect to x. Um, this is equal to that. So what is f? And how do we get f? This is my favorite part because um, when I do this in class, I can read the despair uh, in the eyes of the students who are realizing that after we integrated our equation and then derivated it again, we're going to integrate it again. And then um, we're going to find what f is by integrating this with respect to x. Yes? So let me rewrite this equation here. Uh, let, me, let me specify precisely what we have. We have partial f over partial x is equal to minus rho times a squared x plus a b. What is f? Well, f is going to be the integration of this with respect to x. So it's a minus rho times a squared times one half of x squared plus a b x like this. Um, and this is plus then a function g of all the rest. But f is only a function of x and t. And so since we integrated this with respect to x, I'm only left with t. And so I have a function g of t here. Um, this function, again, includes some starting point um, for, for pressure. Um, so now we have this. Um, let, me, let me again describe what we did here. We have integrated. with respect uh, to x. Now that we have f, we can put this term here, this whole equation there at the bottom, uh, back into this equation here that we had there. And this equation on the on, uh, slightly higher up in which I'm going to insert, um, I'm gonna number it. And I think we were at number four, so I'm gonna call this uh, number five. This equation here is number five, right there. So we go back to equation four, five. Like so. And now we rewrite it. So we have P as before. So equation five on top of the screen has minus rho times PCY plus A squared times one half of Y squared plus this function F and this function f we described as so, which is minus rho uh, times a squared, one half of x squared plus a b x here, uh, plus a function g, which is a function of time. And so we can now just rewrite, um, just for aesthetics, the final equation like this. This is minus rho times uh, b c y plus one half of a squared y squared um, minus, no, plus uh, one half of a squared x squared uh, plus a b x like this, plus a function g of t of time. And this function g, again, I'm going to add a little comment on here uh, to say that this includes, whoops, this is a um, software bug. Here we go. This includes uh, starting pressure, a P0 
uh, initial pressure, initial volume. volume. And this, this expression here is everything we can say about pressure in the initial field. Um, so let me, let me uh, square this up. Hopefully the software will come after me to fix it. No, it won't. Let me, let me configure this like this. Let me square this up like so. Like this. Ah, didn't work. It's fine. Um, this is everything we know about pressure given the original velocity field that's given on the top over here, the x plus b and minus x uh, minus a y plus c x. So again, uh, let's let's try to recap what the Navier-Stokes equation tells us and does not tell us about pressure. If you have the complete velocity field, then you can find out um, what the derivative of the derivatives of p with respect to x and y are. Uh, with both of those derivatives, providing you've done your homework and checked uh, that they are compatible with one another, you pick one, you integrate it with respect to the, the, the um, parameter that you have on the bottom here, and you get one first expression. This is the expression 5 that we have. In there, you're left with a function of the other variable. And this function of the other variable, you can evaluate it because you've got the other um, specification for the derivative of pressure and playing with those two informations you combine them together through an integration and a derivation to get one complete function of 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 p with respect to space what the navier stokes equation does not tell us is two things one is how p changes with time uh, because if you look back on this equation here or even that one there, you have the gradient of pressure, which specifies how pressure changes in space, but tells us nothing about how pressure changes in time. And if you run computational fluid dynamics simulation, uh, you will have a great deal of trouble predicting how pressure has changed since the last time you had values for pressure uh, in order to solve your equation. And the second thing it doesn't tell us, it was the basis value for pressure is. Um, in other words, in the Navier-Stokes equation, only the change in space of pressure counts and not the value of pressure itself. And so it turns out in a fluid flow simulation, in an incompressible uh, fluid flow, you can increase or decrease um, the, the value of the pressure everywhere by the same number. And it doesn't change at all the dynamics of the flow. Uh, this is because pressure itself does not influence the dynamics of the flow. Uh, it is the change in space of pressure which does. So this is, um, this is what you can say uh, using um, just a basic academic example about the mechanics of the momentum balance equation, the Navier-Stokes equation. So here you are.